Today, when regarding black films, the concept of super blacks and their relationship to reality brings controversy. Some critics say that the shafts and the slaughters are unreal super blacks, and that Priest, the Harlem dope pusher in Superfly, is a negative image for black youngsters. Still other voices say that until blacks control their own films, there will always be stereotyped images. To discuss the facets of the black film dilemma, we have with us Ron O'Neill, who played Priest in Superfly, and Hugh Robertson, who edited Midnight Cowboy and many other films. And he's just directed his first feature film, Melinda. There's a lot of controversy raging in black communities from New York to Los Angeles over the images being created uh, in black films by the film industry. And as a, the center of part of this controversy, Ron, uh, how do you see your role in Superfly uh, as a positive force or a negative one? Oh, wow, what a question. Well, I'll tell you, Jim, um, Obviously, I consider it a positive one, or I never would have done the film. Um, I helped to write the film, um, my role in particular. Um, you see, when we, when we begin to discuss the criticism of black films, uh, you have this duality involved, this two-level thing. You see, you have the man in the street, his actual condition, and the way he actually lives, uh, the way we actually live in America, and then you have uh, all the things that people keep going around saying, you see. And when we made Superfly, we made it about the way things actually are. And we hoped it would be judged and criticized on that basis. Uh, but my, from my observation, you know, Superfly has been largely criticized from some some, you know, at some sphere, some, some plane, some plateau, you know, that has no bearing on the film. It's like, you know, it's like um, if you're going to discuss, you know, African dance, I mean, it's like, you know, the Bolshoi, <laughs> Bolshoi ballet uh, teacher, you know, d doing a criticism of uh, African dance. I mean, it's, it does not a apply. How do, you, how do you explain the... The, the popularity of Superfly, in spite of the criticism that it received, I mean, the, the adverse criticism. Well, it's, it goes back to that <laughs> duality again. You see, you have the masses of people, black and white, you know, and Superfly is played to an awful lot of white people, by the way. It's the only way you can do $19, $20 million. And we've been in Boston 17 weeks, and we ran out of black people in three weeks mm -hmm. in Boston, you know. Um, it's the duality between what the man in the street really wants to see and what people keep saying the man in the street wants to see. Now that's another discussion possibly, you know, that we can get into. It's my personal opinion that the reason uh, there's been a, a rash of so-called black films uh, on the exportation level is because we have been basically invisible and black people have naturally starved uh, in terms of seeing their own image in, you know, other than a stereotype role on the screen. So uh, uh, the motion picture industry, which is a business, uh, will continue to make these films until uh, the mass of black people uh, stop going to see them. You know, it's all works from the box office, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I think that's where uh, all the black organizations who have been against uh, this one-dimensional type of uh, filmmaking should direct their attack to, you know, that the people stop going to see films that they feel is either derogatory or negative or whatever. In terms of that, that uh, duality problem that Ron mentioned, uh, you might call it, uh, on one hand, in need for image therapy, that is for black people to see themselves uh, in good light. Mm -hmm. And the other need is to see reality for what it is. So, so that's... Uh, well, it's been one-sided. You know, it's mm -hmm. been one-dimensional. I think that there's a, a, a mass of, of uh, 
of uh, material out there from the other black writers have, have written book form, script form, mm -hmm. uh, that haven't been touched, you know. Uh, and I think uh, uh, our history, which has been invisible in this country, should come out. I mean, like Buck and the Preacher, for instance, uh, I enjoyed the flick. It was educational and as well entertaining, commercial, yeah. uh, because it dealt with that period uh, of the black struggle in this country that I didn't learn in a history book. And do you think the kind of black people that the film focuses on has anything to do with it? Like, for instance, Sounder also uh, dealt with a, a different kind of a black person than the street ghetto ghetto uh, image. Does that have anything to do with uh, sort of the, the different reception that movies like Sounder and Buck and the Preacher got as contrasted to Shaft and Superfly? Do you think, Ron? Well, you said that. Uh, <laughs> the different reception, uh, they, they certainly did get a different reception. Uh, you could take all those movies and put all the grosses together and they didn't, they didn't do what Melinda did. I would guess. Uh, uh, take, uh, no, Shaft did well. No, I'm not Shaft. Uh, Sounder and, uh, oh, yes, and, true. and uh, Buck and the Preacher. You That's could put true. them all together and they didn't do what Melinda did or Superfly, you know. That's true. Um, so if we are to judge you know, what black people truly want to see. Well, here's what I'm trying to say, Brother Jim, let me say it. I have yet to find any basis uh, of, pr of proof for me that these so-called black leaders who insist on making these statements in the media, uh, ha that they have, that they are responsible. I mean, that they have a right to say anything about black movies. I mean, you. You take all those organizations, you could take the membership of, the, of CORE and the NAACP and put it in 10 square blocks in Harlem. The entire membership, you know, wouldn't take up 10 square blocks in Harlem. I think, what, there's two, 3,000 people in CORE. I mean, how all of a sudden, you see, does, what makes these people, wh what, where do they get the platform from? They're, I mean, they're not artists. They're not psychiatrists. Uh, I suppose they're politicians of a sort, you know. I mean, I don't lay out the plans for, for, for political organizations. They don't submit their political plans to me for approval, their political stands, their decisions. You know, and, and if I suggested that, they would say I was silly and that I didn't know anything about <laughs> politics. I suggest the same thing may be true about movies, you know. Yeah. But this, um, this a sort of what seems to me to be a five-year-old mentality at work here that takes all black films you see, which is a mistake in the first place, and tries to lump them all together. I mean, Superfly has as much to do with Melinda as a film as, as, as Melinda and Buck and the Preacher mm -hmm. have to do with each other. They're very yeah. different mm -hmm. films with different approaches mm -hmm. and different intents, you know. And, uh, but we, we take this 300-year or 400-year racial thing, you know, our needs, and we take this to the black artist and we demand, you know, that he conform to some kind of idea, an idea which no one can, can really dr finally draw or agree upon. I mean, can, was, can you make a film that gets the equilateral support of CORE, the NAACP, and the Nation of Islam? <laughs> I mean, can you, it's not possible. You I see? want to try it. I mean, you know. <laughs> you know. How, would, how would you define uh, Entertainment. What what makes a film entertaining? Well, it seems that since uh, the American scene has been conditioned to uh, violence and <laughs> and, and uh, sex, I guess you can't really omit them to that extent. You know, the TV uh, and this country was founded on violence. You know, the whole it's it's, it's all incorporated in, in history. What is it about violence though that is, that, it, that seems to be, to be entertaining? Well, it seems that people enjoy seeing it. I mean, because the box office uh, receipts prove it. Mm. Uh, that, uh, I mean, the reason that uh, The Godfather, which is a prime example, was successful to me, was because it dealt with these items, such as violence, uh, had sex, and it uh, also had, to me, an educational factor to it, too. How would you And it was reality, you know. It was real. Yeah, yeah. Violence is real, you know. Right. Yeah. Very. <laughs> <laughs> How would you define it? Why is it, why is it entertaining? Right? Um, I think we live in a very violent society, for one right. thing. Uh, uh, I think many people 
have contained in them, you know, a great, uh, great amount of violence, you know. Um, I don't know, it's our technological society, I suppose, and the problems thereof. But, uh, yeah, I think you can make a film that has the, all the good things of violence without necessarily the physicality of violence. Violence is more a thought than a deed, I think. It's more an idea, mm -hmm. a conflict, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and indeed, some of the worst forms of violence are mental mm -hmm. violence, mm -hmm. mental, it's intention, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, I think good drama uh, ascends to that level, you know, in the final analysis. Well, Shakespeare, true. of course, is, true. is a, the best yeah. example of that. Right. Well, you rarely have uh, scenes of bloodshed, but all, always the contemplation and the threat of it right. is always there. Yeah. Right. Right. So, y y would you say then that, uh, that that violence itself is not what's entertaining, but the the, the problem of violence, which every, every person has to deal with, it's is as old as the human race. People right. have always loved that. It's nothing new. Well, perhaps then we can look forward to the day when the uh, the black American film will move from what is called exploitation to some, uh, I won't say higher form of art, I'd say clearer form of art, perhaps. More mature. And a clearer form yeah, of entertainment. Yeah, I mean, at least uh, three dimensional, you know, instead of just one okay. dimension. Okay. With yeah. that variety you speak of, it is yeah. so necessary mm -hmm. before anybody can choose mm -hmm. what, is, what is valuable. Really, I feel that, it, it, that I think a lot of black families feel the need. Uh, to take the entire family to, to see a, a film. Yeah. And, and it shouldn't be restricted, you know, for whatever reason. And I think there, there is that kind of material out there in abundance yes. for that to happen. Yes. Where a whole family can see a movie and enjoy it and, and relate to it, you know, without and it movie being be about as, as tough a subject as, as possible if, if it's treated properly, right. Right. with clarity, right. with dignity. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. We could always do. Um, separate tables and call, it, <laughs> and call it separate checks as told from the waiter's point of view. You know. <laughs> you know. hey, I want to thank you guys for coming on. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you.